I actually always wanted to be an opera singer, so now's my time, Charles. Fallujah. <laughs> um, you know, only in a city like Vancouver can so much magic happen. And it might take an outsider sometimes to get too close to things to, um, to appreciate its magic. Uh, for me, it's a different scoop of ice cream. It really uh, opens my mind and, and allows me to see new possibilities because there's so many great minds. So I've, I've sat here and um, every single person who says something I feel so much connected to, I, I can share a story. Chip, I, I'd have to share you a story because this is really crazy. Well, what, I host a uh, multimedia philanthropic endeavor called Explore.org. But Explore was taken from a company called Energy, E-N-E-R hyphen A-C-H-I. And it was a yoga apparel line. And about 10 years ago, I was sitting in Estes Park and a company called Lululemon had just started and your booth was next to ours. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were talking. And anyways, um, Energy, the philosophy of what I do to explore comes from uh, energy. I had to close it a few years ago because I, I got a little bit busy with um, Explore. Anyways, Lynn, I haven't been in my locker in four years. You know, people ask for it. So Lynn, uh, in four years I decided to kind of go into my own soul by opening that locker because energy was really a dear part of me. Um, and uh, I opened it and I took out a pair of our yoga pants. And I didn't know, Chip, you were gonna be here today, but these pants are right in my pocket. <laughs> now here's something crazier. I had never been to Vancouver then. And do you know what these pants were called? These were our, well, energy, but these were our Vancouver's because of the colors of the green and black. <laughs> now, the person whose booth I was next to said, yeah. That is incredible. Now, why, how does that also apply? Well, what was energy really about at its core is about blending East and West values in the convergence of what was gonna happen. And now the gentleman comes, the reporter, I've, and so there's something very magical about this city. Um, and uh, it really is a change of, of flavors for me. I just, that's why your talk hit on so many chords because just today we had a meeting with a marketing firm and I was like, just listen, Charlie, it's, it's not your show anymore. Like, you know, I think I've, kind of, I've almost become detrimental of trying to do less and empower others and trying to learn to listen. So maybe we can talk. I, I just really enjoyed that. Um, but where else could a, an opera like uh, Fallujah even incubate? But in a city like this, you know, there's a real uh, selflessness. Uh, in Vancouver that I've, I've never really experienced. And at Explore, our mission is to champion the selfless acts of others, to try to create a portal into the soul, and to inspire lifelong learning. And so this has really become an incubator uh, city for me, and, and it's no surprise that so many wonderful projects we're working on have come here, like Sam's work. I wouldn't find this back home anywhere, or Charles's work, or we work with the Vancouver Aquarium, um, and that's a wonderful new gentleman working with PTSD issues. But I, I uh, in, in those videos, you know, the places I just saw, India and China, and, and hearing that, that talk, um, breaking down boundaries and replacing fear with trust. That's really what my mission is at Explore. Um, that said, uh, you know, Sam, I, I wasn't really expecting to speak much. I could share a lot of stories, but we do have some uh, new initiatives and maybe people here can help. Um, life has changed a lot for me. So it started as this kind of, Explore started as a traditional film, photography, media company, whose goal was showing how we all share connective tissues around the world. So I kind of started by going to places that are dominated by the media and hopefully portraying a positive light. China, we all say the world's great superpower, we should be afraid. We like to point out there are human rights violations, but we've all had a history of violations. So sometimes the media or 
Then Africa, I always say, um, if you look at media, it's portrayed as the world's great pity party. There's AIDS, war, famine, disease, and a few cute animals sprinkled on top. But there's actually amazing people everywhere doing amazing work. And that's really what Explore is about. And Sam, that's what you're about. Hmm. And Lynn, and all the people who are here. Um, we do have some new initiatives I, I'd like to share with you that have been really exciting and, and they've kind of, while well, I've been here, taking place. They have really, they're not that exciting, but I have an opportunity and so if people know or have any ideas. Let's just first start with, uh, we'll start with Q and work our way up, uh, maybe. As a hobby, this is the first time I actually have a, a golden retriever named Lucky. He's 15 now, he was a search and rescue dog. For the last six years, what was actually really interesting about the talk before is how the world's changing the economics. All of my projects have actually been in America because there's more change going on in America. I've seen more third world conditions actually in cities like Detroit, West Virginia, and Mississippi than anywhere in the world. So in terms of especially aid and support, so um, anyways, this dog, uh, he's uh, 15 now, we started a website Facebook page actually, running a website called Dog Bless You. Or God bless you. And it's really it's really what of all the things I do, it's what gives me the most joy actually, this page. Because it's complete purity of spirit, it's pure love. There's about three hundred and thirty thousand members on it. It's become one of the larger photo sharing sites, but I only bring this up because we did a campaign, we've done a few. Uh, we sent six search and rescue dogs when the tsunami hit Japan overnight. Uh, we just had a campaign called the Eyes of March where we gave away six dogs to um, people who are blind. But of my real campaign, and this is funny because you know Charles is doing Fallujah and this is why I'm tying it in, is we had a campaign last summer called Dog Bless USA where we so far paired up 36 service dogs with soldiers struggling with PTSD, which I think is, is just one of the most amazing things. And we get letters now all the time for more and more requests. So I bring this up because this is what I love about social media and Facebook. I'm either gonna launch what I call, if it's over, no one knows this by the way, this is beauty, not even my own staff, but I'd like to acknowledge Jason and Tom over there, who are the real brains. Uh, one campaign, I might call it, between in America, uh, May 27th and July 4th, is I call it the Spirit of 76, which means during the, you know, America Independence 1776, the idea is we're going to give away 76 more dogs. And we do this kind of like sharing system. And I bring that up. If we don't do it then, we might do it over the elections in America because. Um, my, I have a little campaign with my dog list USA. I have a photo of a golden retriever soldier sent me in Afghanistan. It's a Stinger missile on his back, actually. And he was one of the dogs that was looking for Osama. I almost said Obama, jeez, Osama. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, he was looking for him, and I came up with this campaign, which is like, Dear Mr. President, you know, if you entrust us dogs to find the world's most deadly terrorists, please entrust us with the mission to take care of the men and women at home. We never turn our back. And so the reason why I bring this up is I'm actually a quarter Canadian. And when I was talking to the military, what I, I didn't leave out is that my great uncle's name was Ben Dunkelman from Toronto, is one of Canada's most famed war colonels from World War II. And then he went on to Israel to become David Ben Gurion's right hand man. He loved dogs. I remember the one time I met him. And so what I was suggesting is, and I was mentioning it to a gentleman named Tim, that this year I'd like to begin this program in Canada, and I'd like to at least donate four dogs, but I don't know if a program exists yet. Uh, so if anyone knows of one, uh, please tell me, because I want to spread it up here. And if not, when we do do this campaign, I really encourage you to join in so that people in your government can see this power. Uh, another initiative we're doing, I'm just going to go quickly and I'll end it, so I'm seven minutes, I'm sorry, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Pearls of the Planet, and it's just about falling in love with the world again. By, we set up all these live cams around the world, from panda bears in China to polar bears in the Arctic to the beluga here in the aquarium. And uh, it's allowing people, I hope, to become natural scientists again, just by observing. 
And lastly, something I think I really encourage, I just have a lot like the reporter, I guess, some interesting stories. I always say I'm good for cocktail parties. If you ever have a boring party, you need a table. <laughs> Invite all of us, we all do a different table. Great, but, um, is, uh, Sam, I think, I don't know if you saw it today, uh, a really close friend of mine, our kids are best friends, his name is Mike Prickett. Mike Prickett is one of the most uh, renowned cinematographers in the ocean in the world, big wave surfing stuff. He was a real hero. Um, he was in Tahiti about a month ago, and he was doing a National Geographic shoot uh, about 250 feet under, and his colleague was drowning, so he decided to save him. And coming up, um, Mike had a bad case of the bats. And uh, at first they wanted, no one had ever survived from his death. They don't know why he's alive. First they wanted to amputate his legs. Then they said he would be in a wheelchair. I mean, this was a very active guy. Now they say maybe he might walk because he has such a will to walk, but they don't know he has six months. And so we've been archiving this project. It's a new type of film, like a webisode. It's just really a personal diary because I think I showed you some of it. He lives in Hawaii. I don't know if it struck a chord, but I really encourage you if you go to explore, because it's, it's just how life can change in a moment, and, and to support him. And uh, so that's the new cups of, uh, that's three scoops. <laughs> I got I like hot foot stuff. So thank you.